Hey y'all and welcome and this video is going to be the top 10 uh, SEC ball players going into 2024. I've got these uh, players ranked 10 through 1 uh, and uh, there's just a lot of good uh, ball players coming back this year. Uh, a lot of first team, second team, all SEC players that are returning. A lot of guys that after this year is over are going to be going in the NFL drafted uh, top 10 in the draft. Uh, and and I, I'm sure I'm going to pick some people that you all don't agree with. So if you don't agree with it, that's fine. Let me know who I should have had on this list. Uh, but uh, without further ado, I'm going to get to the number uh, 10 person uh, on the list, the first person, and that person is Brady Cook. Man, Brady Cook had a great, great season last year. He led uh, Missouri to 11-2 record. Uh, he had 21 TDs. Uh, he, uh, he threw for over 3,300 yards. He had 319 yards rushing. Uh, he This year, he's going to be going into his third year, and he's going to be throwing the ball to Luther Burden. I expect another huge season out of uh, Brady Cook. He killed my balls last year up in Columbia. He, he's got poise. He's, he's got calmness to him. He led uh, Missouri to a couple comeback wins last year against Kentucky and Florida. Uh, he beat Ohio State in the Cotton Bowl. So Brady Cook is very uh, worthy of being on this list and somebody that I hold in high regard going into the 2024 season. So Brady Cook at number 10. Uh, now at number 9, I've got Trey Harris, who is a receiver um, from Ole Miss. Trey Harris had 985 yards last year. He had 8 TDs, uh, and he also had 54 receptions. Uh, he caught the game-winning TD against LSU last year. Uh, he is definitely the number one option this season for Jackson Dart, and he was last year as well. Um, and he led uh, Ole Miss to an 11-2 season last year. So uh, Ole Miss finished top 10 uh, last year, and, and he is a big reason why. So Trey Harris at number nine. Now, number eight is Jalen Milrow, QB for Alabama. Uh, he was second team All-SEC last year, had 23 TDs, only six interceptions, had 531 yards rushing. This is what makes this guy so dangerous. Um, you know, you got everybody covered downfield, and there Jalen Milrow runs down the, uh, the sideline for a 70, 80-yard TD, and he's got running back type speed. Uh, made really, really big plays last year. You know, they lost early to Texas, and they come back and won all those games until they lost to Michigan in the playoffs. Uh, made that throw to Isaiah Bond uh, in the Auburn game. Uh, led them to beating Georgia in the SEC championship game. Jay, so Jalen Milrow was very tested, very good quarterback, and somebody I have a ton of respect for. So number eight, Jalen Milrow. Uh, and now, speaking of Isaiah Bond, uh, I've got him at number seven. Uh, Isaiah Bond was at Alabama last year. He has transferred to Texas. Uh, he had 48, rece 48 uh, receptions last year for 668 yards. This guy's super fast. He, uh, he's been clocked at a 4 2 40. Uh, he's one of those guys, if you let him get behind you, he's gone. Uh, and uh, he had a great year last year. Uh, you know, Burton and, uh, and uh, Bond were obviously Milrose two big tar targets last year. Uh, Texas uh, offered him a lot of money to go there. He looked really good in the spring for Texas, and I expect him to have better numbers uh, this year with Texas than he did last year with Alabama. I expect, uh, I expect uh, Isaiah Bond to have at least 700-plus yards this year at the minimum. Uh, wouldn't be surprised if he goes for over 1,000 yards, honestly. He's just that kind of receiver. And uh, so Isaiah Bond at number seven. Uh, now uh, number six um, is Carson Beck. And I think Carson Beck will be uh, in New York for the Heisman presentation. I don't know if he'll win it. But I expect Georgia to go undefeated, just to be honest with you. And typically, uh, if you're one of the better players on one of the better teams, you go to New York. And I think Carson Beck will be there in December. Uh, he is a QB. He's going to be in his second season as a starter. He was second team all SEC last year. Guy had over 3,900 yards throwing. He had 24 TDs. Uh, he led Georgia to the SEC championship game, in which they lost to Alabama, uh, but they beat FSU in the Orange Bowl. Uh, he's got a ton of weapons re uh, returning, and he's going to have another phenomenal year. And uh, I expect him to be uh, drafted pretty darn high next year in the NFL draft. But uh, Carson Beck, a big year. Uh, I expect him 
to have this year for Georgia, and he's at number six. Uh, now at number five, I have Harold Perkins. He is a defensive end at of LSU. Uh, this guy, he just had five and a half sacks last year, but he was injured a lot of the season. Uh, he had seven and a half sacks in 2022 as a freshman. Uh, he was a 2022 first team all SEC. And even though he was injured a lot last year, uh, he uh, he was a second team All SEC last year. Harold Perkins is a guy. Any offensive coordinator will tell you, you better know where he's at on the field, or he will uh, he'll wreak havoc. Uh, Harold Perkins is an amazing, amazing player, and I think he's probably the second best defensive end in the SEC. Uh, and I expect a huge uh, season out of him. Uh, I expect him to probably get around ten sacks uh, this year. Uh, so he is a, a major reason why I think LSU is going to have a, probably a, a pretty good season this year. So Harold Perkins at number nine. Uh, now number four, I've got Will Campbell, uh, offensive tackle out of LSU. He was a first team All SEC last year uh, in 2023, 2022. He was a freshman All American. Uh, he is a perfect NFL prospect at the left tackle. Uh, he is six foot six, 325 pounds. He has been a starter for two seasons, and he is only he's only allowed three sacks in two seasons. Uh, he's uh, probably the best left tackle in college football, uh, and he'll be uh, he'll be gone after this year, no doubt, and be making a lot of money. Uh, Will Campbell at number four. Uh, now uh, to get to the top three. Uh, at number three, I have James Pierce Jr., who is a defensive end out of Tennessee. Uh, he had 18 tackles last year at nine and a half sacks. James Pierce had a coming out party last year. And he, James Pierce is really, really good. I know I'm a little bit biased toward him, uh, but I think he's the best defensive end in the country. He was a first team all SEC last year, and I think he's going to be a top five pick in the NFL draft uh, as long as he doesn't get injured next year. Uh, he is, uh, I mean, if, if he has, I think he's going to have a better season this season than he did last year. And if he does, Tennessee's going to have a really good season. Uh, so James Pierce Jr. at number three. Uh, and now at number two, uh, I have Malachi Starks, a, a cornerback for Georgia. Uh, he had 52 tackles last year. Uh, he had three interceptions. He was a first-team All-SEC player. He was a consensus All-American. This guy is a lockdown corner. Uh, really hard to get any kind of throws on this guy. He is an NFL-ready QB right now, uh, and he is going to help Georgia win a lot of games because this guy has just got all the tools to be an NFL QB or uh, cornerback, and I tell you, uh, Malachi Starks, uh, he's somebody I, I really dread playing against because it's hard to get your receivers open when this guy's on them. Uh, so Malachi Starks at number two. Now, the number one uh, player in the SEC going into 2024 is Luther Burton. Man, did this guy have a great year last year. He had 86 receptions, had over 1,200 yards receiving. He was a first-team All-SEC. Uh, he's good, definitely going to be the number one target for Brady Cook. He makes Brady Cook's life very easy. Uh, and I think he's the best wide receiver in the country. Uh, that's how good Luther Burden is. And I think he's going to be a first-team All-American by the end of the year. Missouri's got a pretty favorable schedule, too. So I expect Missouri probably win at least 10 games this year. And Luther Burden is going to be a big reason why. So anyway, that is my top 10 players of the uh, SEC in 2024. If you don't agree with me, let me know why. And uh, I'd love, love to hear back from you guys. I'll talk to you later. Thank you.